Hello everybody! My name is Alyssa Cox and I am super excited to be here. If this is your first time tuning in, please make sure to follow, like, subscribe to whatever platform that this is that you're seeing this on, whether it be Instagram, whether it be um, YouTube, what, whatever. I am super excited and um, for those of you who do not know me, like I said, my name is Alyssa. And I'm here just to really just talk about God and talk about His goodness and I hope to really push people and to have greater understanding and make decisions based off of godly counsel. So you're in the right place if you want teachings, guidance, counsel, um, as far as just how to live a godly lifestyle, it's super tough, especially in this day and age. But I do feel like there are principles that we can stick to, that we can adopt, and that we can continue to live by. So, let me make sure I have everything. I have my notes down here, so I want to make sure that I'm on track. I'm also listening to Spirit Move. Um by Bethel Music. It's one of my favorite um, groups to listen to. Okay, so bear with me. Getting my stuff up. Okay, so as I was saying, everybody, I'm super excited that you're on here. I am going to be talking about the benefits of wisdom. I can't believe we've already made it to this point. I think this is like video number three or four. I'm not sure. I could be even stretching it. But I would have never believed that we would have even made it this far. So this is superior. Like it's so cool that um, we're getting to this point. It's nice to have just growth and it's it's just awesome. So um, I've been stretching myself in to do this and I hope that this is helping you also stretch. So we will be talking about the benefits of wisdom. I'll be going into six different benefits and I will first start off with a topic scripture. Then I'm going to reintroduce a few scriptures that I spoke about in my first video. And then we're going to get into each benefit and then I'm going to talk to you about a current book that I'm reading and then we'll have conclusion. So. Bear with me guys, um, I hope this video isn't too, too long, but I do feel like the information that I have is really good. I've been working really hard, studying really hard to just get really prepared uh, for this moment just to release it. So with that in mind, I am going to go ahead and just say a quick prayer. So uh, give me one minute. Uh, we're going to do a prayer and then we're going to go into the swing of things. So, Father God, thank you so much for allowing us to be here, allowing us to tune in. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for creating us. We ask that as we even listen, Lord, and talk about this uh, subject, Lord, that you give us eyes to hear, eyes to see, God, and ears to hear, Lord, everything that you want us to do, Lord. Allow wisdom to be a daily influence, God. Allow us to choose wisdom each and every day. God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you fill our hearts with wisdom, God, and that you fill every relationship with wisdom, Father. Lord Jesus, in the name, in your name, Father, we just ask, God, that you just come through, Lord Jesus, and strengthen us in even those areas that we feel weak in. Lord, um, I ask that you decrease, I ask that you allow me to decrease and you increase, Lord, as I go forward. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. So going on, as you guys know, I love to hold my Bible. It's just, I'm very traditional that way. So I am going to open up with Proverbs 3, 21, and I am in the New Living Translation. So Proverbs 3, 21 states, My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them. And it's pretty simple and sweet. He's saying don't lose sight of the common sense that I've given you and don't lose sight of discernment and I really liked this scripture because I felt like it went back to my first video that we talked about um, the different types of wisdom so if that's something that you haven't looked at yet that's definitely a starting point so we know that practical wisdom as as I defined it was guidance that you would need to accomplish a given task 
or to avoid hardship. So when he says don't lose sight of common sense, it's falling into that category of practical wisdom. Secondly, discernment. Discernment I define as a supernatural wisdom. Uh, this is going to be one that is an understanding of what could come, what what, what will come. It, it's knowing it's knowing beyond here and now and being able to make decisions for yourself that is going to influence your future. So not only um, is God talking about wisdom, two different types of wisdom here, he's telling you to, to, to hang on to them. Don't lose sight of the practical things in life and also don't fail to realize further than just here and now. It's, it's good that we keep in mind that not only do we need to make decisions that are good, for us in present day, but the present day decisions that we're making are affecting our future. It's effect, it's affecting us 5, 10, 15 years from now. So he's saying, don't lose sight of common sense. Don't lose sight of judgment. Don't lose sight. Hang on to these things. Hang on to your knowledge. Hang on to your understanding. Hang on to the common sense of how the world works. So that was my opening scripture. And now I'll be going down into the six benefits of wisdom. Uh, this is following right after that scripture, so uh, Proverbs 3 and 23 is my first benefit that I'm going to list to you, and it is stability. Wisdom creates stability. Verse 23 says, keep safe, verse 20 says, 23 says, they keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble, and of course, when they say they, we're going back up to the scripture that we just read, and he's talking about wisdom. These, This common sense, this judgment, this discernment is going to keep you on a steady path. It's going to keep you on a firm foundation. It's going to keep you stable and steady. I also liked, I also have a supporting scripture for this one, and it is Psalms 18.33. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, enabling me to stand on mountain heights. So not only in the place of elevation, Will you be able to uh, climb higher into the things of God? But he wants to give you stability to stay there. It's one thing if we climb high to a place and when we realize that we are uh, where God intends us to be, we slip and fall because we, we, we lacked wisdom, we lacked understanding. So what he's telling us here is climb to that new height, but also take, take wisdom with you so that you'll be stable in your place. So that's number one, stability. Number two, wisdom brings peace. So following right after the scripture that we read, uh, Proverbs 3 and 24, you can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. Uh, so wisdom creates peace. No fear, no anxiety, a peaceful mind. Who, who doesn't like peaceful rest? Uh, one thing that God gives us is the gift of, of rest. We, we need to be able to rest. We need to be able to enjoy sleeping. Like we, we, we do so many things throughout the day and we're all constantly in a, in a, in a cycle of just going, going, going. And, and we're in this, uh, this mindset of go, 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 but rest, we have to be able to rest and rejuvenate and, and revitalize our mind and our body each and every day. So he's, he, he comes to give us peace. And one of my fav favorite scriptures that supports this one is First Timothy, Second Timothy, sorry, Second Timothy one through seven. For God hath not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So that is number two. God gives us peace through wisdom. Number three, wisdom promotes protection. Proverbs three and twenty five says, "You need not be afraid of sudden disaster." Or the, destruction, or the destruction that comes with the wicked. So we know that when we are wise, we're making wise decisions. We're, we have wise uh, counsel. We have friendships that are built on wise principles. So we're not going to be doing things that are going to lead us astray. And you know, one of my scriptures that I really, really like with this one is Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction that many uh and many enter through it so what he's saying here is like there's only a handful of people that use wisdom in a way that will protect them so we need to be able to 
stay on that narrow path. We need to be able to to do the things that God has us to do, even when it's hard, even when it's tough. And it may. And the thing about the narrow path is sometimes it may seem lonely. It sometimes it may seem um, seem lonely and and um, just really tired tiresome because we uh, are constantly driven down something that God God knows is supposed to be right for us, even if we can't see that at the time. So it's important. That if we really want protection, we have to stay, stay on a path that God has for us. And and the second half of that says, wide is the gate of, of destruction. So yeah, you can stay on a wide road, but know that that sometimes when people are around you, doesn't necessarily mean that they're right the right company for you. So stay on that narrow path. Stay doing the things that God has for you. Okay, so that was number three. Number four, right? That was, yes, that was number three. Number four is, ooh, three, four, five, six, yeah. Okay, so number four is wisdom is influence. And this one, guys, I'm super excited about because, um, you know, I'll explain that. But just listen, uh, I'm going to read this and then we'll go into this one. But wisdom is influence. This is number four. So, so, so. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm just so excited about this one. Okay, so do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. So whenever I read this at first, I was like, it automatically came to me. I was like, okay, you're, if you have power to do something, you have influence in that area. I believe that to a certain degree, everybody has some realm of influence. Whether we have walked into it, whether how wh whether we are actively pursuing it or actively cultivating it or even know, I feel like God has given us all strengths, talents, and abilities to have a certain realm of influence. As children, that is our inheritance to have influence. If we look back on what uh, King Solomon did in his early, early life as a, as a king, he did some phenomenal things. Um, I... I use him as example because we talked about him in the last video and we talked about how um, he basically was known throughout the world. He was known, people wanted his advice, people sought after him, people gave unto him. Um, I'm trying not to jump to my next part, but he had influence and uh, he was able to resolve conflict and reconcile nations. So it's important for us to know that when you are wise, you also have a greater level of influence. People are going to seek you. People are going to want going to want you to represent them. They're going to want you uh, as far as businesses. They're going to be calling you when you when you walk in wisdom. They're going to be wanting you to be uh, on board with them. So with that note in mind, I have been reading craziest things. So I had already did my studying for this already did my studying for this and I'm reading this book I don't know can, can everyone see it becoming a millionaire God's way and I feel like this has brought so much clarity to my life I might have to do like a certain like a separate teaching about this because I can just talk 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 I haven't finished it yet but it has some really really good things and um it just so happened that I was flipping through and as I was flipping through, I seen a wisdom section. And so it's in the middle of the, the book and I haven't even got here yet. But um, I wanted to share this guys, share this with you guys because I felt like it was so good. So um, he talks about wisdom and they say it says that wisdom brings happiness, long life, riches and honor. More than just biblical knowledge of spiritual things. And so keep in mind, I had already did my teaching. And of course, I, 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 I run upon this and it kind of clicks to me. I, I guess I get more, uh, more of a revelation. And I realized that uh, biblical knowledge is just the beginning. So when you have wisdom, you're going to have uh, you're going to have biblical influence and you're also going to have influence in the real world. It, he also goes on and he says um, that he, he uses Solomon as an example, but he said that Solomon knew how to make smart investments because of wisdom. He like like we were saying, Solomon was not a poor guy. He was rich. He had honor, and um, he also talks about just how 
when you come into wisdom, people will seek out people will seek out uh, us for opportunities and for partnerships. And I think if this doesn't motivate and and really excite you guys, I don't know what will. Because think about it: if we ask God for wisdom, we it's limitless as to what God can do for us and how He can even give favor unto unto people to to pave the ways that were ultimately meant for us. Uh, he also goes on in the book and he says the world should be the world should be coming to the people of God to learn about how the world works. So if we have wisdom, then we have principles to live a successful life. Not only be an influencer, but to uh, not only to to lead our own lives, but to lead others. So I got so excited about that. I just feel that there that it's just limitless guys there's so many possibilities and so many things that we can do okay so uh, i'm gonna keep on going on i can talk about influence all day because it's one of my favorite topics but number five is honor and riches um so psalms 3 and 35 goes the wise inherit honor but fools are put to shame so plain and simple He's saying if you're wise, you will uh, be able to have honor, you will have riches. We even think about going back to Solomon's life in 1 Kings chapter 4, how he had abundance, he had cattle, he had land, he, he had people working for him. It just went on and on. When you're wise, about, wise and intentional about making decisions, then um, you'll be wise about your money. You'll be wise in areas of e e emotions and, and mental mentally you'll be you'll be um I shouldn't say wise but you should you would be um abundant in that area. So last one number six is longevity. The Psalms three and no sorry Psalms four four through six my father taught me, take my words to heart, follow my commandments, and you will live. <clears throat> Get wisdom, develop good judgment, don't forget my words, or turn away from them. So he's saying, if you live this way, if you live that narrow path, then I'm going to show you what you need to do. You're going to know what you need to do. You're going to live accordingly. You're going to live a long life. I don't think there's anybody who necessarily says that they want to die early. Like, that's just foolish it's crazy so if we want to have a good life we obviously know that wisdom is can create many many benefits for us I only listed six and I'm sure that there's many more if I really did some deep 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 studying I could probably find some more maybe that might be one challenge that I could do but in as a recap we are going to go over the six Six benefits. Okay, so first, number one is stability. Number two is peace. Three is protection, influence, honor and riches. And then six is longevity. So with that, I basically have reached my end. I am going to go down to read one more scripture and then we'll be done. So it is coming out of Proverbs 4, 6 through 7. Don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Her love, her love, love her, and she will guard you. Verse number seven, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. So you heard it, guys. That was just the icing on the cake from there. I pray and pray and pray that this is helping someone out there, that this is motivating, encouraging. I feel the, that this whole purpose of me being even on here is to really motivate, encourage, and push those. I want to see lives being transformed and being pushed into new purposes and destinies. So uh, I hope that I have said something. Once again, please like, comment, um, feel free to message me on any platform if you have any questions. Um, on YouTube, please subscribe. I need new subscribers. 
And once again, guys, thank you. Thank you for joining another episode of Godly Wisdom Speaks. Um, until next time.